Hello everyone. Welcome back and thank you for joining me. Well, it's unicorn time. So I promised you guys all I would show you guys how to resin the unicorn um, or as I want to call it, um, a black stallion. I know stallions are males, but I love horses and I love stallions. Um, there used to be a show when I was a little girl. Um, it was my all time favorite show in the world to watch. It was called the adventures of the black stallion and the star, one of the stars in the show was Mickey Rooney. And, um, if any of you guys are around my age or saw that, used to watch that show too with Alec Ramsey and he was the jockey of the Black Stallion and they used to race, gosh, I'm going down memory lane here. But anywho, my all time favorite show growing up as a kid was that show. Um, I loved it and um, I actually did some writing lessons of a year or two ago and Sophia did some writing lessons as well. Um, so if I remember and if I have time, and if I can find the video, I will put a short clip at the end of this video of me riding um, a horse and jumping some um, jumps. But I can't, I'm not going to promise that. I got to see if I have that video somewhere in the archives. But anywho, just a fun tidbit of you guys to see me in uh, my normal life. Well, I wouldn't call it normal life because I don't do it anymore. Um, but just some fun stuff I used to do. Alrighty. So, um, I, as you know, have my mermaid, or not my mermaid, my mermaid's over here. This is my mermaid. So I have a mermaid and I've taped the back and um, I did a quick video of how to tape the mermaid and how to cut around the mermaid. So somewhere within this video, um, I will show you that part. I'll just throw that clip in between somewhere. Actually, I might put it in here soon. So I've taped the back of my unicorn. I cut it all the way around with my X-Acto knife. Again, I'll show you guys that with the mermaid. And then what I did was I took some black paint. I took a paintbrush or, um, and I painted with my paintbrush all the sides and the edges. And then with a roller, I have a roller. Uh, doo -doo -doo. It's in there, I'll get it after. So I had a roller and just so to prevent streak marks with the paint brushes, with the paintbrush, I used my roller. I'll show you the roller in a minute. So now it's dry and it's ready for resin, okay? I'm gonna try and make this video as quick as possible, but as informative as possible, okay? Because no one needs to see, or maybe you do, a one hour video. Now, you're probably wondering what this is. So I did a little practice run on a, what is this, an eight inch, nine inch round. Let me see, what is this? Let's see here. Nine inch, nine inch round, MDF wood round, and it's gorgeous. So this was done using the iridescent or interference micas, I'm sorry, by Color Art. So, and I did the stars too. There they are, they're so pretty. Look at that. They look so much nicer outside in the sun and not under these white lights. So I did the stars, those are done. All right, so I will show you guys how to do the unicorn. So underneath I have what's called these, they're painter's pyramids. They're great for wood pieces. Um, I get them off Amazon. They are in my Amazon shops. You can find them in the Amazon shops. Links are listed in the description. Again, painter's pyramids, okay? And I use them under here. All right, so let's put this back. Okay, nice and sturdy. The next thing you need when doing resin, you need a heat gun, okay? You can't really use a torch. So for those of you who are gonna ask, I have a torch, but I don't have a heat gun, get a heat gun. You need a heat gun for resin. A torch is helpful, but a heat gun is what you need, okay? So get yourself a heat gun. Again, those are posted in my Amazon shop. Next thing, very, very important, you need a mask, okay? Um, I use Art Resin a lot. Art Resin says it's odor-free and toxic-free. I don't care what the bottle says. For your own safety, put a mask on, okay? Um, if you're working with resin and you're outside, 
no problem. That's fine. You don't need a mask. As long as you're in a very well ventilated area, you can do without using the mask. But I'm in the basement. It's too cold for me to be playing outside with resin. So, you know, use a mask. And unfortunately, right now, it is impossible to find a mask anywhere, um, you know, with everything that's going on. But and for the purposes of this video, I will not be wearing a mask because if I did, I don't think you would be able to hear me very well if I had the mask on my face. So I will not wear it um, for the video, but I do wear it when I am working with resin, which isn't too often, um, you know, but I do. Next thing you need, gloves. Absolutely get yourself some gloves, okay? You need gloves because you don't want that stuff on your hands. It'll get sticky. If you get it on your hands, if you get it on your heat gun, which you will, best way to clean it off, rubbing alcohol, okay? Don't let it dry, don't let it cure. Um, when you're done using, you know, because even with gloves on and then you go to touch the heat gun, you're gonna get resin all over. You see how my heat gun is? Look at that, brand new. I've had it a year, year and a half and it still looks absolutely brand new with the exception of this white blob of paint right here. But anywho, it's why does it look new? Because when I'm done using it, I grab a paper towel, put some alcohol on it, rubbing alcohol, and I clean it off, okay? Clean your stuff off. It'll last you a heck of a lot longer, all right? So rubbing alcohol, and may I suggest anything over 91. If you can get 97, good for you, get it. All right, next thing you need, are pigments or powders. You can put tube paint into resin. I don't recommend it. Um, if you put too much, you ruin the chemical balance of the resin and it may not dry or cure properly. It may stay sticky. You just mess with the resin. So try not to um, use tube paint, but if you must, go ahead. Um, otherwise, buy yourself some mica powders. Um, go on to color arts website get some powders from there um, just make sure they're powders and pigments that are suited for resin because not everything is suited for resin anywho these interference micas um, from bling it color art um, do work well with resin and so that's what i will be using today you can also use pastes you know resin pastes um, so anywho Let's move on. You need some cups, you need stir sticks, and you need resin. So typically I use art resin. Um, it is very, very expensive, especially here in Canada. Um, I buy it off Amazon. If I buy two gallons, it costs me just under 300 bucks. So you can see why I don't typically resin a lot of my pieces and the pieces that do have resin, the price goes up on them a bit because again, $300 for two gallons, that's pretty expensive. However, I have found a Canadian company, um, so for those of you in Canada who are watching, um, Crystal Resin. I've heard good things about it. They sent me a sample kit, so I'm gonna try this today for the first time. Um, I've never used it before, but I'm pretty sure we're good to go, um, and it'll be fine. So I'm gonna use that and I will add that information in my description below. I believe at the moment they are having a flash sale. I don't know how long the sale is for. It may even be over by the time I post this video. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so for those of you in Canada, Crystal Resin. For those of you in the US, I hear KS Resin and Stone Coat, I believe, are very, very good resin companies and a lot of my friends our YouTube artist friends um, use those brands in the US, okay? These are mixed one part resin, one part hardener, or resin hardener, okay? One to one ratio. So what I do is I will get a cup and you can see there's little ridges here. I will fill up my cup to where I want. If I fill it up to the second, third, fourth ridge, I will get my other cup and fill it the same way. You cannot fill them based on weight. Like if you have a scale and you put them on a scale because one weighs more than the other. One's a hardener, one's a resin. They don't weigh the same, so you can't weigh them. You have to measure them. If you have a measuring cup that's got, you know, the, you know, ounces or whatever, use that. But for me, I use these cups because they have these ridges and I can see exactly where I'm going to fill them up. All right? So... I'm going to put resin hardener in here, resin in here, 
and I will be right back. And in the meantime, while I'm doing that, I will show you guys how I taped and cut around the mermaid. Okay, so be right back. All right, guys, so just a quick to show you what I do before I get started is um, here's one of my mermaids. Uh, this is another piece I have to finish. Um, so what I did was I turned her over and I put tape all over the back. All right. Okay, you get your tape, put it all over, make sure all the wood is covered. Then you can take either your finger or a popsicle stick and just rub it here along the edges just so that the tape gets a good seal, all right, along, just like so. And then when you're done taping your wood piece, you turn it over and then here's what you've got. So then the best way is get a piece of cardboard or a cardboard box or something because you don't want to damage your table or whatever. And then what you want to do is grab an X-Acto knife and then cut around, basically trace your shape and cut around it. If you have a nice sharp knife, it will make life much, much easier. See? And then you just pull it away and just like so. So then let me just do this side here. Okay, like that, so that's off. It's a very long, tedious process. Um, it's not something like a Dutch pour that you have done in, you know, five, 10 minutes. Uh, this is a very, very long process. So just pull it, you know, off the sides, just like so, and keep going. I hope you guys can see how you guys can see what I'm doing. So just literally trace around your shape. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfect. Like, I mean, if you can make it as perfect as possible, do so. But it does not have to be absolutely perfect. See? And then just pull it apart. Pull it off. All right, and there you go. You've got clean mermaid and then on the back this is what it looks like okay so then once you've gone all the way around and cut all the pieces what you want to do is again just take your finger and push down the edges okay make sure there's a nice you know good seal here between the tape and the wood and just go all the way around until you're done so that's that process. I'm not gonna obviously do the whole thing, but that's how you get the tape on the back of a wood piece and how you cut the tape off. Okay, and don't forget again to push around the edges to make sure the tape is properly, um, has proper, properly adhered to the wood. Okay, so there's that part and let's move on to the next step. All right, I have, you have seen me put the tape on the mermaid and how I cut it out. So I have gone ahead and filled this halfway, this you can see halfway and halfway. Now, typically depending on how much I put in, I will take my stir stick and dump it in one cup and then just use the same cup. But because these are filled pretty high up, this isn't gonna fit into this, so I need a bigger cup. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my cup and I am going to put it in here all right now keep in mind um, resin needs to be stored at room temperature okay um, and now that I mentioned that I should have thought of that because I'm in the basement and it's definitely not room temperature down here so right now this is a little thick because I am not paying attention to my own rules but anywho it's fine because I will heat it up with my heat gun all right so scrape as much and everything that you can out of the cup and then get your other cup see how much more fluid that was okay scrape get every little drop okay don't waste resin it's a crime <laughs> 
You don't want to waste resin, especially when it's ex it is as expensive as it is, okay? Don't waste resin. All right, so I've got both in here. It looks all clear like water. Then you got to start mixing it, okay? Now you got to sit here. Now don't whip it. Like don't, don't do that. Just mix it, okay? And as you're mixing, make sure you get the sides. Make sure you scrape your popsicle stick every so often. Scrape the sides again, okay? And just mix it until you incorporate all the resin with the hardener. Now, as I'm going, you'll see it's gotten cloudy, okay? That's normal. It will get cloudy, which is why you have to continue to mix this according to this up to five minutes okay i know it's a lot and you're probably your hand's gonna fall off after because your hand's gonna be so tired but you need to mix it for five minutes with art resin it's only three minutes but this one says five so i'm gonna do what it says and as i'm stirring i'm gonna continuously clean off my stick scrape the sides and keep stirring so i'm gonna do that for five minutes and i'll be right back all right, guys, I'm back. I've been stirring for five minutes and my hand is killing me or my arm or whatever you want to call it. Okay, so there's lots of bubbles going on in there. Another thing I forgot to mention you need, you can get this from the dollar store. It's just a silicone mat. It's used for, you know, you can put your glue gun and your stuff. This is great to put your heat gun on because this thing gets so hot. If I put it here, it's gonna melt right through the plastic, okay? So get one of these, you can use it, put your heat gun on it. All right, so once you've decided the colors that you're gonna use, get yourself some little shot glasses, okay? And you have your pigments. So what you wanna do is now, depending on your piece, depending how much resin you need. Now, to determine how much resin you need for a piece, you can go onto um, Art Resin's website or you can just Google Art Resin calculator and it'll pop up on google and you can punch in the dimensions of your piece so let's say you're resining a 12 by 12 piece it'll tell you how many ounces you need of resin so that's a great thing but for something like this it's kind of impossible to determine how much resin you need okay so i just guesstimate and if i have any extra resin left over i have pieces kicking around um, you know, or silicone molds where I'll fill them up and make things just so that I don't throw away resin because trust me, you don't want to throw away resin if you don't have to because it is a huge waste. All right, so I'm going to fill these up, not to the top, but enough so that I have enough to do the unicorn with the um, interference micas. All right, one more. Okay. All right, so I've filled them up. That one's got a lot, but whatever. Uh, I'll make that one blue because I love blue. So what you do, you take your mica or your paste if you have. All right, I'm going to take, in this case, there's a lot of resin in there, probably a heaping popsicle stick or tongue depressor, whatever you want to call it, and I'm going to put it in here. Now, what I should have done now that see how much of things I think about after the fact, the best thing to do, don't do what I just did, put the powder in first, then pour the resin on top. Because now when I go to stir this, I'm going to get like dust clouds in my face. So now I have to be extra careful and just kind of make it so that I bury the pigments in there. <laughs> I sh totally should have thought of that first. But again, I don't really think of these things. Okay, there we go. That wasn't so bad. But to save yourself the hassle, put the powder in first, then pour the resin on top, then you're good to go, okay? So here we go. Give it a good, good stir. Make sure all the mica powder has dissolved and you're ready to go. I don't know if you can see that, but that's the blue, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and do it to the rest of them put all the powders in and I'll be right back. So again, this is gonna be a lot of pausing and resuming, okay? So I'll be right back. Okay, back again. 
So I've gone ahead, mixed all my powders. Okay, and then what I did was I had a bunch left over in here. I poured um, quite a bit of it in here. I always like to leave um, some clear resin just in case. You never know. One of these might run out and you might need a little bit more. And the last thing you want to do is mix new resin. So I always leave a little extra just in case. And besides the fact, if this is enough and this is extra, you can use this in a mold or do something else with it. And that way it's still clear and not black. So I have put some in a cup. I have taken just some tube paint because um, I don't have black powder or black paste or black pigments. Um, I just took some, this is Artist Loft. Any black will do, it doesn't matter the brand. And I squirted one, two, like two drops, two big dollops, call it what you want, um, in here. And I've mixed it up, made sure it was nicely mixed and we are ready to go. All right, so the next thing you wanna do now is you want to pour it on your piece so i'm just going to do this so if you're doing a blue background or a different color background then you would tint your resin in the color of that background um, in this case the interference micas work best under black that's why i chose black and let's face it i love the black stallion and Black Beauty and all those movies and all about black horses. So that's what I chose to do. Now what you want to do is you grab your heat gun and on low, not high, you just want to blast the resin just to warm it up, make it more um, fluid, more, you know, easy to push around with your fingers and pop any bubbles that are currently in that. So I'm going to do that right now. Constantly keep moving around. Do not sit on you know one piece or one part I mean constantly move around as I'm doing this I can see all the bubbles popping okay you just want to warm it up because it was a little cold because I am in the basement okay and you can see once it starts to get warm you can actually start to move it a bit I don't know if you can see that but all right so once you warm it up all right and you get your juno hair out of there good lord you gotta love juno all right good thing about resin is you can see especially with my lights the shine and you can see if there's anything in there you're gonna catch it now comes the fun part your gloves you can use a spatula you can use a stick i like using my fingers because a it feels really good <laughs> Um, and B, you actually get a better sense of where you're actually pushing the resin, right? So you want don't want to push too much where it falls off all over the edge too much and then you're just wasting, right? So just take your finger and this is why we wear gloves and just play with it and make sure you get resin and all cover the whole top. Now then what you do when you do that is you want to do the sides. So just with your finger, push a little over the edge and then rub your finger across. Okay, just do whatever you need to do to get this whole thing covered. Now in little nooks and crannies like right in here, I can't get my finger in there. So what you want to do is grab a popsicle stick and then just literally use your popsicle stick because I literally cannot get my finger in that little crevice. Okay, so that's what you want to do. I'm going to go ahead and do this and finish this off. I'm going to put it on pause because you sure as heck don't want to see this for the next 15 minutes because literally it does kind of take that long to do all this. All right, so I will continue with this and I will be right back. Okay, back again. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I have covered the whole unicorn I went around every single side with my finger and wherever I couldn't get it, I used the little popsicle stick to get into these little crevices here. What you wanna do now is do another once over with the heat gun just to pop any new air bubbles and also just kind of move it all around and make sure it's all covered and nice and fluid and warm, right? Because you only have a certain amount of working time. According to these bottles, they say 30 to 40 minutes. Um, art resin, I could probably get an hour out of work time. So that's why I kind of like art resin as well. Um, but 
this is good for these projects. Art resin is good for if you're doing anything you want to put food on. It's food grade safe. Um, and, you know, I use it for my coasters as well. Um, so this stuff, I'm going to heat it up now just to warm it up and we'll get started with the actual interference colors. So again, just start on one, the top or the bottom, or if you're doing a round, I don't know, whatever you're doing, and just keep moving it around. And as you, you can't see it, but I can, I'm popping bubbles, air bubbles, as I go, all right, I can see them popping, all right. There we go. Okay, put that on here. This is why I have this. It keeps and protects my table. Okay, so let's get started. Now, what I wanna do is I definitely wanna make the whole tail, uh, nice, beautiful colors and the mane and maybe the unicorn and then the rest of the body, I'm just gonna put a few squiggly lines. So let's get started. Um, there's no rhyme or reason for what I'm doing or how I'm doing it. Um, so just basically take your popsicle stick and I'm going to drizzle. It doesn't matter if you make a mistake because you're just gonna blow it out anyway with the heat gun. I'm not sure if you are seeing, oh yeah, you can see it. Yeah, you can, perfect. Okay, so let's see, what else do I wanna do? Let's do the legs, all right. I'm gonna leave the body for last. So I just wanna see everything and I'm gonna leave the face um, for now. I just want to see how everything's gonna work out. Um, now, if you really wanna learn more about resin, there are some really, really awesome resin YouTube artists. Um, Tammy Anderson, you all know, um, she does do a lot of resin pieces. Lately, she's been doing a lot of acrylic stuff, but if you check out a lot of her older videos, um, she has a lot of resin on there as well. Uh, Monica Barnes, she also does a lot of resin. Actually, all she does is resin, I believe. Um, when I first started and started watching YouTube videos and tutorials, about resin, Monica Barnes was one of the people I used to watch a lot. Um, Petra, I cannot pronounce her last name if my life depended on it. Uh, Petra J, I'm gonna call it. Um, Petra does some really awesome stuff as well. So those are just a few artists um, off the top of my head. I will try and remember and link their info in the description below. That way you can click on their uh, YouTube channels and you can learn a lot more from them as well. All right, so I think I'm gonna start working my way. Now you're probably wondering, what is this mess? Trust me when I tell you, once you start blowing this with the heat gun, it will look stunning. What haven't I used yet? Actually, since I went across, I will do that with these colors as well. Now, do you notice how I'm not dripping over and I'm kind of getting my stick and moving my way out? Um, you do not want to just drip on new stuff. Or what am I saying? You do not want to drip on a pattern you've already created, right? throw some gold this is gonna be so pretty once I blow it out okay and now we just need some green so I'm gonna leave the face I actually don't want to touch um, the face I'm gonna leave it as is I want to leave oh bugger I touched it you see what I did I touched the side of the leg and I got green on it. So I'm going to cover that up like so. This is why I left some in the cup here because oops, you never know when you might need some extra. All right. Did I get any green on the tail? Okay. I will leave it at that for now. And now what you wanna do is on low, 
you're just going to go over it all again just to warm it all up. Once you've warmed it up, then we're going to start pushing. Okay, so let's get that started first. Nothing's moving yet. I just want to warm it all up. That's what I'm doing. And I'm popping any air bubbles, which there are a lot of, from these new colors. Okay. And then we're going to start to push. So I'm going to put it on low. And what you want to do is just go down and just kind of push it. It's hard to explain, but you'll see it start to move. Now you don't want to overdo it because then you're just going to end up mixing the colors too much and then it might not look so great. Once it starts blending, then just move on to the next spot, okay? That's what you want to do. You want to blend. Let's start down here with the other leg. Put it on high. You got to be careful. You got to keep moving the heat gun because you can very easily burn the resin, okay? You can and you will burn it if you're not constantly moving it. You've got to constantly move it so that you don't burn it. All right, let's move down here. Oh, so pretty, I can't get over this, unbelievable. This is gonna be so nice when it's dry. She's gonna shine like the black stallion. <laughs> Okay, let's assess now. Oh, wow. You know, I might just do the face after all because she's all pretty and there's a few cells coming up here. And uh, boy, oh boy, her legs look great. So does her tail. I might add more in the center because down here it looks beautiful. You can't see it from, like, I mean, I'm looking at my camera right now and you can't really see it. When I bring you guys down for a close-up, you will see it. Um, okay, so I'm going to add some more in here and because uh, I definitely want it to look like this down here. So let's add some more fun and I will do the face. I've changed my mind. I will add some more. Let's see. Put some here. All right. So Mother Nature today has been uh, pretty loopy. Uh, one minute it's beautifully beautiful and sunny, and then the next minute there's like a snow snow blizzard out there. It's it's crazy. It'll be like a blizzard for like ten minutes. There'll be snow all over the deck and the you know the driveway and everything, and then the sun will come out. It'll melt it all, and then it'll snow again. It's been on and off all day. I can't believe it. It's so bizarre. I think Mother Nature has Corona. Honestly, it's so weird. Okay. I just want some nice weather for a change. I want nice warm temperatures where I can take my pup Juno out and he can get some really nice walks. All right, red, which is kind of like a, it's not even really red, it's just so beautiful. Let's see here, add some more. 
Oh, I can't wait to bring you guys down for a close up to see what I see. You will lose your minds. So while I'm doing this, um, when this is dry, it should be dry in uh, 24 hours. Well, it'll be dry in, you know, 12 to 15, but, and it'll take a little while to cure 100%. Um, but when it does, it'll be available and for purchase. And if anyone is interested in this unicorn, um, I only have one and I'm not getting any more. Um, not anytime soon, I don't think. So if you are interested in the unicorn, you can email me and let me know. Canalosoraco at gmail.com. Okay, let's uh, blend in the rest of this and we'll be done. So again, I'm just gonna warm it all up first. All right, get it nice and warm. And now I'm gonna start to push it and blend it. There are so many more cells that came up on this now. This is gorgeous. Oh my God, I can't wait to show you guys. Okay, so that's it guys. Um, I don't think I left anything out. I think I pretty much covered it all. If you have any questions, um, put them in the description below, in the description. Please leave your questions in the comments below um, and I will do my best to answer them uh, in a timely fashion. Um, but I'm pretty sure I covered it all. So now just leave it. Don't move it from where you have it. Um, you know, if you do resin upstairs in your house and you have pets, um, get yourself um, something to cover it with. I have one of those picnic nets. Um, you, I don't know if you can find them at the dollar store. I know you can definitely buy them on Amazon. It's just like a net, a pop-up tent net. Um, and I've got a bunch of those. I don't need to put it on mine. I resin in the basement. I go upstairs. No one comes down here. Okay, so I, I don't worry about that. Um, oh my gosh, I can't believe how pretty this is. I'm gonna, when you, you guys are gonna lose it. Okay, so we have the, um, I'm gonna take the glove off because I don't need it. So we have the unicorn, okay? Uh, I believe she is either 18 or 24 inches. I think she's somewhere around there. I'll measure her when she's dry. But you get the um, unicorn and you will get, it comes with the stars, okay? So for any little girl's room, um, this would be beautiful if you put the stars on either end. Um, I was thinking of maybe getting my wood guy to make me a moon, and then you could have a moon with the stars. So I might do that for anyone who's interested in pur purchasing this and maybe wants a moon. I might be able to do that. I might not, we'll see. But anywho, um, that's it. So yeah, check out all the information below. I'll link other YouTube artists who are resin artists. Um, and don't forget, please use a, a mask. This isn't something you want to mess around with. Um, there are chemicals, um, especially when you heat it up, I could smell the chemicals. They're not strong. They don't bother me. But if you do this every day or you do this a lot, in the long run, it's gonna cause you damage, okay? So please wear a mask, okay? I cannot stress that enough. And then again, when you're done, clean your stuff. Clean it all off with the um, rubbing alcohol. If you wanna buy any of the interference stuff, anything off color art, you can save 20% off the entire website um, with my code Canela120, all lowercase, all one word, Canela120, okay? I think I pretty much covered it all. I cannot believe how this thing turned out. Like I said, there's only one. So if you want it, jump on it. Uh, Do you see that? Jump, horse, jump, <laughs> buddy. Anywho, um, I think that's it. I will bring you guys down for a close up and we'll go from there. Be right back. All right, guys, here it is. Now you can see the colors so much better look at those cells and the beautiful colors it's amazing 
If you are watching and you are not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate it. It would mean a lot to me. Hit that notification bell and check out Juno's YouTube channel, My Husky Puppy, and follow him there. Subscribe, watch his videos. It would mean a lot to me, guys. Um, okay, so this is it. If you are interested in this unicorn, you know what to do. Email me. Uh, I have to wait for this unicorn to dry. Tomorrow I will record the last part of this video um, where I peel off the tape on the bottom and show you guys how to take care of the back and get the resin drips because there are drips. Let me show you. You see those drips? You got to get rid of those. All those drips. I will show you guys um, how to do that. I just got to wait for this to dry. Um, and that's it. So I will stop for now um, and I will continue tomorrow when she's dry. Okay, be right back. Hey guys. Okay, so it is the next day. It is, uh, what is it? Thursday the 16th, which is today. Um, it's the afternoon. The um, unicorn is dry and I'm super, super excited. Um, so I'm going to show you how to deal with this, okay? So you can see all the resin drips, okay? Which is fine. This is why we tape everything. Now, some people are probably wondering, well, what a waste of tape this is. You know what? It's not really because sometimes you need to grab the bottom if you're like picking up something and your hands are dirty and you touch the bottom in the center and then all of a sudden you've got it dirty. I, better safe than sorry, tape the whole thing. You never know when you're gonna get your dirty hands on the back. So I like my pieces to be nice and clean on the back. So that is why I um, tape it completely, okay? I can actually reuse this tape um, to put on the back of my coasters. So I can totally reuse it, no big deal. All right, so what you wanna do is you're gonna need your heat gun again. And what you wanna do is just warm up parts at a time. This will loosen up the resin, make it a little warm and make it very easy to peel the tape. So let's do that right now. I'll start with just the legs. Again, keep it moving. Do not leave the heat on the same spot. You don't want to burn anything because let me tell you, this thing gets hot. I know, I've burned myself many a times. All right. All right, so we've heated that up. And now what we're going to do is I'm going to find an end. There we go. Can you guys see? Yeah, you can see. All right, now, and just like this, peels right off, okay? The drips are gone, nice and smooth, okay? Perfect. Let's do the other leg. So I warmed up this leg, and watch. Look how easy it comes off. It's like therapy. Look at that. Perfectly clean. No drips. Now you don't need to sand anything. You know, you can see the resin kind of leaked underneath, which is fine. Like, I mean, it's going up on the wall or wherever you're going to put it. So it's not the end of the world. It's not perfect. So I'll do the tail and then you'll get the gist of it. So let's peel the tape off of here. And as you can see, it peels off. If I can get it, there we go. Super easily, okay? Look at that. Perfection. Just like that. All the drips stay on the tape. You've got a nice smooth surface and that's all you need to do, guys. So you just peel it all off, heat it all up again with the uh, with the heat gun and you're good to go. Look at this, I peeled these off the plastic. These are great skins. This is another reason why I like using resin sometimes 
because the skins dry so fast. I know you probably can't see the color in that, but there's some definite color swirls in there. Look at that. Very, very neat. So I had some leftover, re oh, look at this. I had some leftover resin. Look at this. <laughs> look at that. Can you see that? I hope you can see that. But anyhow, that's pretty. That's gonna make a really nice uh, magnet. So I had some leftover resin, and of course we don't throw away resin. And I had this um, eight by eight inch cradled wood board, and I just piled on the rest of the black resin I had, and whatever leftover colored interference pigments I had, and I made this. So I have an eight by eight. I believe this was a nine inch. I have two of these, one of these, and the stars that go with the unicorn. Um, so if you're interested in any of these galaxy type pieces, um, feel free to email me and uh, claim it as your own. It's canalaseraco at gmail.com. Um, so there you go. So I am going to work on getting the rest of the tape off of this. I'd like to take it outside and show you guys what it looks like in the sunlight. But currently we have a blizzard going on. No joke, guys. It is snowing out there and it's a miserable day. So the um, sunshine portion video might have to be in another video. Maybe in the next video I post because right now it's snowing. So I won't get, be able to get to that. So anyways, thank you everybody for watching. I know this is a very long video. So thank you for sticking with me. Um, that's what happens when you do resin. It usually doesn't take this long, but I try to explain everything one by one, um, every bit so that you guys know what to do. That's why it's this long. So I hope you stuck with me through all of it. If you have any questions that are not answered in this video, you can leave the questions in the comment section below and I will answer your questions. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I really hope you enjoyed this. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and all the information you need for color art and the discount the website the links everything is listed below and below in the description click on the title of my video and the description will pop up right below it okay that's it for now guys thank you so much for watching have a good day have a good night and stay safe guys take care bye